Firstly, I'd like to pass on my condolences to the family and friends of those who've been affected by this incident. Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service received a call to a house fire on Sycamore Lane, Stafford, at 20 to 3 this morning. Three fire appliances and an aerial ladder platform were mobilised by our fire control staff. On arrival, crews were faced with a fully developed fire on the first floor of the end terrace property. One male, one female and a baby had escaped from the property prior to our arrival via a first floor window. Firefighters wearing breathing apparatus entered the property in order to search for other family members. Our firefighters were faced with very difficult conditions inside the property due to the severity of the fire. I can sadly confirm that the bodies of four young children were located within the property by Fire and Rescue Service personnel. Our fire investigation team are currently working with colleagues from West Midlands Fire Service and Staffordshire Police in order to find out how the fire started and spread throughout the property. At this time, I cannot comment further upon the likely cause, however, we'll keep you updated with further information as it becomes available. I know that this heartbreaking, tragic incident will have affected large parts of our community, and as such, Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service personnel will remain in the community to provide support and advice. If anybody requires further advice and support, our contact details can be found on our website. Again, our thoughts go out to the family and friends of those involved at this tragic incident. In the early hours of this morning, officers attended a house in Highfield, Stafford, along with colleagues from the Fire and Ambulance Services, following the reports of a serious fire. Tragically, four young children have lost their lives in the fire, and I can confirm that the children were boys aged three, six and eight, and a girl aged four. A woman aged 24 and a man aged 28 escaped with a one-year-old boy. The man is being treated for burns and the woman for smoke inhalation. All three remain in hospital, but their injuries are not deemed life-threatening. I want to reassure you and all of our community that we're working closely with colleagues from Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service as investigative work into the cause of the fire begins. We would like to offer our heartfelt condolences to the family and thank the community sincerely for their support as I'm aware that groups and individuals have already begun to offer aid. We will provide further updates in due course as the investigation continues. Thank you. Thank you. After the fire, this group came to lay flowers near the scene. The bouquet they laid bore a tribute from the children's aunt and grandmother, overcome by emotion. But these are feelings shared by so many on the Highfields estate in Stafford, a place where many young families live in streets clustered around a single primary school. She always came on the bus with the kids and they were always so well behaved. Uh, it's just really, really sad. Just crying all morning, it's awful. I just think. No, it's just really, really sad. It's just the sadness of the family mm. losing the children. You I know, it's so. just devastating. Tonight we're doing a vigil, walking up to the, the baby's um, passed away. Family are here, um, we've got a great turnout of commu uh, community here, amazing. Bigger than I expected, it was just meant to be a few of us. And uh, a lot of people have turned out and it's, it, again, it's amazing. It's just, it's great how the Highfields community, again, have stuck together and I'd like to thank them all very much. I have been speaking to the family over the last few days and to be fair at the moment they still want to be left alone and then grieve um, obviously um, but tonight they chose to come with us which has been absolutely amazing and very honoured. <laughs>
I just hope it helps them a little bit today and to see um, that they've all got together and they can have a little chat after and, you know, make it perfect for them tonight. The investigation will go on for some time, but this has been a very difficult day for the people of the Highfields estate and for one particular reason. Many young families live here and the ages of those children, three, four, six and eight, mean that any family with a child at preschool, at nursery or at the primary school will know those children, will have interacted with their parents and they're now thinking of that young mother in her hospital bed for whom her children were her world, thinking about her loss, recovering from her injuries and trying to grapple with a grief that few of us... Um. I don't believe there is any member of this House whose reaction to that ghastly news yesterday was other than horror and the most deeply felt sense of sympathy with the family uh, and with the friends of the, the children and parents involved. I mean, I think for any of us sort of thinking through what, what that family uh, has had to, to live through and must face living through in the future. I mean, it, must be, it, well, it strikes one, it must be almost unendurable. I would, I hope on behalf of the whole House, uh, join my honourable friend in paying tribute to the emergency services and let us not forget that for those who were called out to the scene, this would have been a traumatic experience and also pay tribute to the local schools uh, whom he mentioned. The um, Fire and Rescue Service is going to be leading an investigation uh, into the causes of this tragedy and obviously we will have to await the outcome of that before deciding whether any further lessons should be drawn. Well, investigators are still on the scene here, trying to find what could have caused the fire which ripped through the house you can see behind me there in Sycamore Lane, claiming the lives of these four children. Riley Holt, aged eight, six-year-old Keegan Unit, four-year-old Tilly Rose Unit, and Ollie Unit, who was three. Throughout the day yesterday and this morning, dozens of people have been leaving flowers and cuddly toys at the end of the road. The shock and grief here, very much evident. A crowdfunding page set up for the family has already raised around £20,000. And earlier on, I was at a community centre where people have been leaving donations to try to help just complete sadness really I'm a parent obviously and I couldn't comprehend losing one child never alone four um, so real sadness and shock and it's great that the community now have pulled together in what they're doing now forensics teams are still combing the house for evidence those investigations are likely to take at least a couple more days my first reaction when hearing the news was numbness really and just feeling so sick and helpless. Obviously you think of your own family and, and what you would do if you were in that situation. I was at a loss, so felt like I was lucky and therefore I can do something. It was a pretty dark atmosphere and we all feel super strongly that the family needs some support. Pretty got it when you can actually see it and feel it and obviously think of the children who um, are not gonna be at school. If people can give money to one of the fundraising pages, if they can donate clothes or bedding or food, a spare room, offers of coming round for dinner, anything to make them feel they have a community around them.